Hello folks, today's book haul is of a slightly different nature to previous book hauls that I've done. I went to our local book fair last week and had a marvellous, marvellous time. It was wonderful. Um, I picked up lots of really old books with beautiful bindings and that's what I was going there to find. I was looking for yeah, beautiful vintage bindings and also books on natural history. So I will talk about the natural history ones in a separate video because I won't have time otherwise. I bought quite a lot of books. But this video is all about the beautiful vintage bindings that I found and I just had to share them because they are so gorgeous. So to begin with, we have this overview of the top of my writing desk here. These books here are books that I already had, but from here onwards are new ones. And we've got the kiwi in the bell jar there. The first one is this beautiful teal colored book, which has got a lovely little turn or some sort of seabird on the front. and. The spine has foil stamped bells on it. Very lovely. And I just had a look on the inside. It's got a map. And then, oh yes, it says Christmas 1951. And this beautiful colour image, two colour image there. This one is Theatre by W. Somerset Maugham. And it's got a lyre up the top and some foliage. You've got the comic and tragic masks of Greek, Greek theatre, that's where they come from originally, and some other instruments and foliage decorating the bottom there. Just beautiful. It's got a little stamp on the front, but apart from that it's plain. Deckled edges, a painted top edge, and inside it says it was presented to somebody on the 4th of December. Is that what that reads? Anyway, it's 1937. This one is called Worth a Three Penny Bit. It has a lovely teal board with this beautiful, colourful stamping on the front and some gold on the spine there. It was presented to somebody in 1901. This one is a little more recent. Fair Wind to Adventure by John Niven. This is published by Faber and it has a lovely decorated or um, illustrated spine. You can tell it's a more recent one because it has a dust jacket rather than just being stamped onto, you know, being beautifully stamped onto the, the board. And this one is from, well, it was given to somebody in 1955. This is one of my favourites just because it's so simple and elegant with the roses on the border and also on the spine. The Castaways seems to be a book about hunting and it's got a lion killing a giraffe on the front which is a bit on the violent side but a beautiful illustration and it's got a little hunter man on the, uh, on the spine. I do love the spines that have some sort of illustration like this on them. They just look so beautiful when you display them spine out. I couldn't see any, um, any publication date but it does say that the subtitle is The Adventures of a Family in the Wilds of Africa. Um, so I imagine this one is not particularly um, politically correct. But like I said, I won't be using it uh, for instruction or entertainment, just for its um, gorgeous cover. Another one that I won't be using for instruction or entertainment is England's Hero and Christian Soldier. But it has the most gorgeous, this is one of my absolute favourites, <laughs> the most gorgeous cover. I think this, the foil and the contrast between the foil and this very blue, sort of royal blue colour. Um, is just incredible. This is this boy. It's rather lovely and you can see all the detail. So the detail of both the, the illustration but also the way that it has been stamped and embossed. So this is all textured and my goodness is it lovely. Then there's The Voyage of the Beagle, Charles Darwin's ship. 
beautiful design there on the spine which is echoed on the cover or vice versa. Again I couldn't find a publication date on this one but this one does have a book plate in it saying that it was presented as a second prize for grade one in 1911. Look how beautiful this book plate is though. It's got foil stamping on it. The last two here are plain on the front but they have these lovely little spine decorations. You've got the poetical works of Robert Burns with a wee thistle there and then the picture of Dorian Gray. These lovely swirly embellishes. Over here we have the green books and I'll start with this one here which isn't actually green but it's quite close. It's a grey green. It's called the Journeying Moon and has lovely lettering on the front and on the spine. Sadly no date on this one but it does say it's from the Travel Book Club, 121 Charing Cross Road, London. Cider with Rosie by Laurie Lee. Another dust jacketed book and another dust jacket. The Wind That Shakes the Barley by James Bark. Lovely old-fashioned illustrations. I imagine this is from the 50s or 60s. I was a bit off there. It is, well, it was given to somebody in 1947. I will skip over these ones because they are natural history ones that I will talk about in a separate video. But I will talk about this one because I got this not for the pictures inside but because it has a bee on the front. How cute is that? I could not find a date anywhere on this one sadly but it's rather beautiful again. <laughs> and the main reason is the spine. Look at that. Likewise with Milton, I cannot find a date for this particular edition, but again, it's lovely. And inside, it's got little illustrations like that one at the top there. And then there's a wee squirrel. How cute is that? This one is from 1906. Finally, a date. <laughs> and the spine. Oh, the spine. I love this kind of Art Nouveau style. And finally, we have the red slash brown shelf. Collins Pocket Guide to the Seashore, which did have a dust jacket, but I took it off because this is too pretty not to see. Another dust jacket. This one is from 1958. Lovely typography. And look at this seaweed. Another sort of Art Nouveau cover there. I love that it's just stamped up in that corner like that and a gorgeous spine goes quite nicely with the Tennyson. This is Robert Louis Stevenson. This is from 1904 and is a pocket edition. Um, this is Australian ballads and I found out that this is actually not just Australian it's also New Zealand. Uh, Australian ballads and rhymes poems inspired by life and scenery in Australia and New Zealand. Also very interesting is that somebody has pasted in their own poems <laughs> or somebody else's poems potentially. Um, I love that this one is called Nobody Really Cares. There is this beautifully illustrated cover for the Swiss family Robinson. Uh, the spine is not especially exciting but it's um, it's upside down. Well I mean I'm sure they meant to do it like this but also you know when you put it on a shelf it does look a little bit strange. Little illustrations inside as well. There's a polecat and a porcupine. One Never Knows by F.C. Phillips. A lovely iris design on the back which is also on the front. This is another one with a figure on the spine. This is The Soldier Boy. The preface to this book was written in 1864 but I can't find a date for the actual printing of this edition. This next one was published in 1875 and there's a book plate in the front which says that it was presented as a prize on the 22nd of December 1876. This is The Survivors of the Chancellor by Jules Verne. Look at that spine. 
and then yeah Jules Verne down the bottom. I believe that Martin Paz is the illustrator of this one. This one seems to be from 1899, has a beautiful shell pattern or shell design on the front there with some swirly whirly bits, <laughs> technical term there, little spot illustrations, there's that one there. Most of these cost me a dollar each as you can see here. This is from 1882, The Hebrew Heroes. It's got beautiful patterns around the outside as a border and across the middle there and likewise the spine is very lovely. And finally one from 1919, this is Stories from Greek Tragedy which has this kind of um, quite faded spine but when you turn it over it's actually quite a bright rich red and has a beautiful illustration of an ancient Greek ship. A bit battered, but most of them are. So there we are chums, those were my latest additions or additions to my vintage book collection. I hope you enjoyed seeing these beautiful covers as much as I have enjoyed having them on my shelves for the past week and I'm sure I will continue to get lots of enjoyment out of them and lots of inspiration because if you don't know my work is very much inspired by these kinds of things. These are my um, notebooks which are now available on my online shop shameless plug these are going to fall off i'm going to take them off of that but yeah as you can see they're very much inspired by these kinds of vintage bindings and i will continue to do more work like that my question for you today is do you have any old books on your shelves what is your favorite one or your oldest one um, would love to know i'm very new to the world of collecting old books but i feel as though this could become very addictive let me know in the comments down below if you want to send me pictures you can do that on twitter i am at holly dunn design on there and i am also at holly dunn design on instagram where you can see my work or you can go to my website which is hollydundesign.com which is also where you'll find those notebooks that I just showed you for sale along with some other products. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have and I will see you in the next one. Bye!